Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Peter, and I'll be speaking for you today. Okay, so in today's webinar, we're going to review some of the uh, recent features that we have provided. And these features that are giving the HMIs some new roles that we think will be helpful in the smart factory development. Okay. So in the last two webinars, we mostly dedicated our discussions to the IoT communication protocols, so the MQTT and OPC UA, and as well, as well as the gateway device G01 that was basically born with these protocols. Uh, of course, these are, I would believe, important. That's why we introduced them, of course. But we think that HMI will still stay. Why is that? Uh, we think that ultimately people are the one who will be in control of their, you know, their operations, their factories, and HMI being the first-hand gateway to the machine, they are here to stay. So therefore, today we'll explore what new roles that HMI can play in the future. So these new roles will allow the users to have further command of their factory operations. Whether it's about you know, having more control of their data, the detail of the data, or having a big picture of the operation, or whether it's about you know, having control of the factory inside or outside when they're on a the road. So hopefully by the end of this webinar, we'll have, we'll have you have enough information to have a new perspective about the new roles of the HMI. Okay, so the first role is about to provide a new way to record data, and we've done it with the database server. So in the old days, or even still what we're doing now, we record data by row by row, and we probably put it, eventually put it in text files, and we save them you know, in the very old days, we save it on paper. Now we probably save it as Excel files, etc. And uh, we have to organize it in some way. And usually it's by date. You know, we have uh, a file for each date. And that's quite straightforward and organized. But uh, when you have more data, you can see that there might be some problem. And so, for example, maybe. Uh, one day you are being asked to get uh, a data, some sort, some data of a certain time frame from these records you have, and this time frame could be could be quite large, maybe across you know three months. Then how are you gonna flip through all your data to retrieve the data that you actually want? Okay, then you have a flat file that you have to go through. So with our HMI, we have a solution for this, and that's with the concept of database server. So in our CMT HMIs, uh, now we can synchronize the data sampling records and event log records to MySQL database. And so this, uh, this synchronous data is in addition to what would have, what would have been safe already as uh, as text file on the um, on the HMI itself or on like a USB disk, so this is an additional data. So you can also consider it as a redundant redundant measure for redundancy. Okay. So uh, and so once uh, the data is in a MySQL server, then you can use uh, MySQL query methods to get any kind of data that you want from the server. Okay, let's see an example of how this might have been done. So this is an example of, uh, of a data sampling records that is saved on uh, MySQL server. So this is one table of that's containing actually my, the environment data of our office. Uh, it's sometime in September, I think. Okay, so 
this table, it looks kind of messy, but this is actually the raw the raw data that's it has all the information of what you what you took the of the data you took by HMI. So it is supposed to contain information like uh, temperature, humidity, pressure, light intensity, dust in dust density, etc. So this is what's being kept in the database. Although it looked messy, but you don't have to worry because it's only one statement away from the actual data that we want or we need. Okay, so uh, in the MySQL, MySQL data, database language, you can use a select statement to get exactly what you need. Okay, so when you look at uh, this block of text here, this is one select statement that will get you uh, the data you want for a particular time frame. So this would be, for example, uh, if I, I want to see how well my office air conditioning is working uh, early in the day, so maybe between 8 o'clock to 10, to 10 sharp. So I set a condition for time for 8 and 9. So it, so in the end, it will return only the records uh, which has the, the time that's uh, from 8, for 8, for 8, 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. Okay. And on the top, this is just really for formatting so that you can you can get rid of the more messy the mess that you have in the original data and it will come back with a, with a very neat uh, table. So if you put this command on the on the table and you'll get a result that looks like this on the right. So uh, First of all, it's very it's already neatly uh, organized. It takes takes away the you know the the extra decimal points. And more importantly, when you look at the sample time of each record, it's already I start with you know the eight something, and then it basically follows the conditions that we have set for uh, for the data that you want. So you can imagine that you can use uh, other criteria, of course that's suitable for your data set. So your data set, you might be looking at, you know, like uh, machine ID, or you might have like batch number, might be filtering out your data based on other key parameters or key metrics in your data set. So this is quite, flat because it's in a, in a database format, so you can have this kind of flexible way to access your data very easily. And that's the power of using the database to manage your data. Okay, so actually the query statement that I just showed was, uh, is that more like a general way of accessing your data from the database. Uh, but how do you do it though? You can, uh, for the screenshot that you saw, it's actually from, a soft, it's from what's called a workbench. So it's a open source that's official from the MySQL organization. Um, or uh, you can have other alternatives like using uh, web. Clear this. You can have, uh, have the web version. So if you do the web, then you might be using like PHP MyAdmin to access uh, the database. So it's still using the same query, same comments, just different, basically like different clients or different ways to access it, but the data and the methods are the same. Or, or actually, if you Excel is like your thing, then actually Excel has a ODBC linking, which you can link to uh, to your database, to the MySQL database, and you can have um, exactly the same result as other other alternatives. And you know what? This, uh, this whole database thing is actually kind of uh, closer to the, the, the IT edge. So if you just tell the data analysis guys that, okay, the, the, my data is an SQL server, and I'm sure they'll be very, very happy to take your data from there. We can just Google online, like, what's the best 
MySQL MySQL client for for my data. Okay, so okay then I move on. The second role, the second role of HMI, what we think is that it can facilitate uh, centralized management of your operation easily with the function we've introduced called the monitor mode. So before I dive into the detail, then let us just consider uh, it's a case scenario. So we have a case uh, of Actually, this is kind of close to a real case where we have to monitor the key status indicators of our big operations. And these operations of AC machine has more than a dozen, so, so 50-ish stations that we have to monitor at the same time, preferably, of course. So the original or the old solution we had, of course, if we want to monitor everything on the same on the same screen, then basically we we'll have to get all the data to the same one single stream. So we might we might try to group some of uh, maybe group five or ten together, and then we we you know route the data to one intermediate intermediate you know, machine or HMI, and then we we kind of collect them eventually to one you know, single single unit. But the problem is that since you are collecting everything up to one unit, there's definitely going to be a band constraint or the resource constraint on, on maybe on the HMI part. So there will be a bottleneck in your network that's going to limit the number of HMI or the number of units that you can monitor at the same time. And this might even negatively affect uh, affect your other services that's used also using the network. So you are eventually you basically you have a, a very sluggish data update rate and your you know your system just not working if you if you have to have this kind of monitoring system. So therefore uh, in our CMT series, we had this uh, monitor mode that was specifically dealt with uh, dealt with this kind of prop this kind of problem or question. So the monitor mode is uh, is option built into the CMT viewer for viewing any CMT HMI. So so if you have a CMT HMI. Uh, you can, in addition to the regular pages that you have, you can design a specific page that's uh, that's usually, that's smaller. That's 320 by 240, so it's smaller than a regular screen. So it should contain you know, only contain the really important details. Uh, so this this special screen uh, will will be present. It will be shown when you are in this monitor mode. And the trick is that in, in this mode, we'll be able to show up to 20 on one screen at a time. So depending on your, you know, your viewing resolution, if you are having 4 H at 5 by 4, and that's up to 20. And so if you're a little smaller, you can have 3 by 3 so that you can view it more comfortably. So this way, you can really browse all your really critical data from all of your CMT uh, HMIs very quickly and easily. And uh, this being a monitor mode, so the point is to monitor. So you don't really have you're you're not going to you know have to control it all the time. So you can just let it go into a playback mode. So uh, the screen will just flash through all the all the different HMIs automatically, maybe every five or ten seconds, so that it's easier. So it makes sense as a monitoring monitoring device. And the, and the key thing is that all these little thumbnails they're they're showing a lot. So it's whenever the data on the machine changes. It's reflected here, so it's not a 
still still screenshot only. So it's actually live data. Okay, so you might still wondering, okay, now you have this monitoring mode. So everything's still coming to this uh, like this PC, right? So how do we solve the bandwidth problem? And that's with uh, publish subscribe mechanism. So uh, instead of the I guess what's normally used in communication, which was the polling. So you, the polling was that you have to you know keep asking for data again and again and again and forever. So with publish and subscription mode, uh, the, the data is actually updated when the actual data changes. So if uh, the actually so when the HMI discovers okay the data for the monitoring mode changes, you will push the data up to the monitor mode station. So that way they will reduce the required bandwidth significantly. Significantly. And plus that because as I mentioned earlier, uh, the screen is smaller, so ideally you probably sh shouldn't, wouldn't, and shouldn't have that much uh, data to monitor. So the key point is that you are really monitoring the important information when you're using the monitor mode. So there was a brief introduction of this. Okay, the third role that HMI can play is to realize the remote access of your machine that was far away, and that's with our service called uh, Easy Access 2.0, plus the push notification that comes with it. So actually, Easy Access 2.0 has been around for a while, maybe a few years. And since its, since, since its introduction, uh, since we brought it to our customers, uh, it has provided, I guess, thousands of people a really easy and cost-effective way to access their HMIs. And they can do it with HMIs that's located anywhere in the world and they can do it from anywhere in the world. Okay, so you can connect your, with really with a peace of mind knowing that we have already taken care of the network settings and the security settings. So it's, in the end you have uh, your HMI that's like, it's like, it's beside you. Okay. So I'm just gonna give you like a typical usage Easy Access 2.0. So let's look at our little friend Raymond and Obear. And so they live really far away, but Raymond is having problem with his uh, with his system. He doesn't really know why. And you know Raymond, but uh, because Obear tries to explain him to him on the phone, but it just takes too long. So Obear Obear can now use the Easy Access to connect to the HMI that's on Raymond's side. So it will establish the Easy Access 2.0 channel, a virtual channel across the internet through the networks, sorry, through the firewalls that's on both sides. And it's a secure channel that's, that won't be subject to eavesdropping. Okay. And then once connected, the OBEAR can use, uh, if it's a CMT machine, you can use the CMT viewer to watch what's going on on the HMI, or if it's uh, if it's not, it's a other type like the one with screen like EMT or IEXE. You can use a VNC viewer to view the screen, of course. And maybe uh, maybe OBR finds out that okay, the problem lies in the PLC, uh, one of the PLCs. What can he do now? He can do a remote pass through to connect directly to the PLC. He can run the PLC's original factory program and use the pass through to reprogram, perhaps reprogram or find other ways to fix uh, the PLC that's on Raymond's side. And that's a typical, uh, is a typical usage case of using our Easy Access 2.0. But we could take, take this one step further. So we don't, uh, OBEAR doesn't really have to wait until, 
until the Slav Freeman asking for help. Uh, with the push notification, uh, when there's an event that's happening uh, or detected by the HMI, it can be sent out uh, momentarily, momentarily with push notification so that uh, when so that the Obear, whether it's whether he's on his uh, iPhone, iPad, or if he's using his Android, can receive push notification of what's going on, uh, of what's going on at the you know, Raymond's machine. Okay. So let me just show you this in action. So you can see that uh, at the beginning, we have a, guess you know, a blank screen, everything was going fine. On my iPad, it's black because everything's fine. And when something happens at the remote machine, it could jump out right away. As it happens, it comes out as a push notification. Okay. And then, then you can, you know, you can immediately, immediately go to Easy Access software or Easy Access app. And then maybe once it opens it, you can see the events that already happened on the HMI. And from this point on, basically, you can, uh, you can, you can try to make a connection to the HMI and, you know, do your, Solve the basically solve the problems once you once you connect to the HMI. Okay, so that that's how the push notification could have could have worked for Obear and Raymond. Okay. So the fourth row or the last but not least, uh, I'm gonna talk about the the unique CMT architecture. Uh, that's in which uh, HMI is no longer just a traditional HMI uh, with uh, with touch panel. Basically, uh, this CMT series is a totally different, but a very refined ecosystem, and this is providing a, a lot of unique features that that's making possible a lot of things. Like, first example, the CMT structure. We have the idea of the separation of screen and or processing and communication with the controller. And so that's why we can have our units uh, like the CMT SVR. SVR, like this one. We could have an SVR where or which doesn't have a screen as attached to it. But then the users can use the CMT viewer. CMT viewer to uh, to control it, and it's available on various platforms, mobile or PC. Or we have like we have um, all-in-one solutions like the CMT thirty ninety or CMT thirty one fifty that that not only just works like regular HMI, so they have a screen. They could they could work like a regular HMI, but because it's a still a CMT, it still falls under the CMT ecosystem, it can still allow additional access uh, from another CMT viewer from another client that's operating the CMT viewer. Okay, so with this separation of screen, there's a possibility that you can allow different access level. Uh, of each screen, while they all still operate it on the same uh, same HMI machine. Okay, the second interesting feature of HMI is uh, the idea of the ease of sharing of data with uh, what we call the recipe database sharing. Uh, this is actually quite straightforward uh, with the with the database feature. We have allowed uh, users to easily 
share the database, uh, recipe database, uh, among among all the CMT uh, HMIs. So uh, when one of the stations or one of the HMI has its uh, recipe database updated, maybe a, a person is performing, maybe he finds out he needs an uh, additional parameter, he adds it you know, on the machine in real time, and he can really easily push this new, uh, I guess, do new addition to other machines or other HMIs that's around its area. So instead, instead of the old ways where maybe once he train, he has to go to each station to change all of the HMI's recipe database individually, now he doesn't have to because he can do a, gets a one-click push to synchronize uh, the recipes to all the, HM, all the CMT HMI's on his floor. Okay, the third about the CMT architecture is about the concept of the smart HMI. So the smart HMIs are the, the models that's bearing the name the IPC, and they are the hybrid Windows-based uh, devices. And they're hybrid because you can use them alone. When you use them alone, they're uh, PCs. They can do all PCs can do. So they can run all the, so the Windows software, the email clients, web browsers, you know, Office, Messenger, readers, etc. But the story is different when you use it with the CMT SBR or you know, CMT 3090, 3151, because uh, you can run the uh, Windows version of CMT Viewer on our smart HMI. So that effectively makes it a real HMI that can control that can control another CMT device. And plus, we have also introduced or we have a self-designed uh, easy launcher program that we specifically uh, that we have specifically designed for our smart HMI. And with uh, this easy launcher installed, you get a more like a hybrid. PC and HMI with uh, with a refined user interface that's customizable. Because this easy launcher is actually not just any launcher. It's pretty specifically designed for our smart HMI because it integrates uh, the CMT viewer as well as the PC. So it gives you a really more efficient way for it to switch between the HMI and PC mode. And this is like a, it's a six steps to switch between HMI mode and guess, PC the soft, PC software mode. Okay, so it enters, there's like a, a home button where you click and it will brings out the menu. So it, go, it can easily go between the CMT viewer and a launcher where you can, you can uh, open any PC, PC software. Okay, so today we have reviewed uh, many of the roles the HMI that has been realized by the new features. And actually, in fact, the, the roles reviewed today uh, are, still, are kind of well connected to the topics that, that's about the Industry 4.0. Industry 4.0 is about data. And in the sense that all these roles are also concerns about dealing with data. When you think about uh, the database feature, uh, the database feature, our HMI becomes an excellent database, sorry, data provider because it allows, uh, it actually provides our data now in a more powerful or more universal format so that you can, it can be ready for analytic processing very soon or any time. Or when you think about the monitor mode, our HMI becomes an excellent synthesizer of data. Now the data are being arranged to provide a more holistic of your entire operation. 
or when you think about the easy access 2.0, it can be easy, easily thought that the service is a great data transporter, right? Because now the data can trans, we transport the data and let it tra travel across network boundaries and it's up to our demand. And finally, last but not least, uh, the CMT architecture would make our HMI an excellent data manager. The data, in this case, we can manage and utilize the data more creatively or even more efficiently because uh, we can really make the data available where they're intended or where intended or to whom they to whom they're they're wanted. And also now if you look at uh, I guess more a pictorial way of these new roles, you can see that uh, these new roles fit into your factory well. So your you have your uh, database that would be collect that could be collecting data from various uh, stations and would could be sent to you know, a place for I guess central analysis. And at this control station, you can employ the monitoring mode. If in your case your factory is is big and you have a lot of stations to operate, and of course uh, for the maintenance and guys they can do maintenance or monitoring even when they're not physically within the factory itself they can do so with easy access and finally with the CMT architecture the operators they can all, all be free to use maybe a little tablet of their own but they are they are still in close monitoring of uh, all the stations or what's going on at different uh, at different machines and controllers. But of, of course, don't forget that these new roles, they're still built upon our HMI's core competence. And that's our ability to connect with hundreds of hundreds of controllers that's made available by various vendors around the world and our HMI must uh, communicate correctly and issue commands and get information from, from these controllers. So with these expertise plus these new roles that we have introduced, uh, the H our HMI will take uh, the transformation to a smart factory. Okay, so that's what I have for for you today. That